Hey there, summoners. Riot just released the full list of changes we'll be getting on patch 13.8, which happens to be the MSI patch. Just like with the Worlds patch, Riot likes to keep things light when rolling out the patch that MSI will be played on. That said, I think they could have been a bit more generous with some of the ones we're getting here. It can be easy to get baited into thinking a buff means something is automatically good, and a nerf means something is instantly bad, but that's definitely not always the case. So how can you tell what's what? Well, that's why I'm here to help break things down a bit. We'll get started with the system changes first, since these changes are a bit broad and potentially affect the meta a lot more than any champ-specific changes. This patch, the only change in this department, is an adjustment to Cosmic Drive. On 13.5, it received a change that saw it lose its HP in favor of more AP to make it more appealing as a carry item for mages. But in its current state, it still has a pretty narrow audience. The issue is, you have to throw out a burst of 3 spells to proc it, and once you do, the 15% movement speed you get quickly decays to 5%, and stays at that for the rest of combat. With the changes it's getting this patch, the movement speed will now ramp up to 10%, and once there, double to 20. As long as you can keep landing damage on your foes, you'll get to maintain that movement speed, which should help with navigating fights a ton. This will definitely be nice on immobile control mages like Orianna and Syndra, especially in games where you buy Leandris, since that will keep your stacks up for you. Before we move on to the rest of the preview, I just want to remind you guys that while our free videos like this are a great place to keep up with the meta and learn tips and tricks, if you're really serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our elite team of coaches are available 24-7, but you can book a session anytime. We also just swapped our subscription from annual to monthly, so if you want a premium experience, you can get it for just $7.99 a month. With that, you'll get a discounted rate with our coaches and have access to all of our courses anytime. Alright, with all of that stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the direct changes to champions, starting with the buffs. Alistar is now getting his fourth buff in a row. I don't really think Riot gets it. When played right, he's already really strong, but he's a champ that not a lot of people really grasp very well. The buff this patch doesn't really affect his lane phase, since most 2v2 fights are won pretty quickly, but it does make him a lot stronger in team fights. No supports are really ever to be that tanky with items alone, since they're on a pretty low budget, so having his massive damage reduction up an extra second and a half goes a long way in filling your role as a disruptive frontliner. The only change to Ezreal is an increase of 2 AD. That isn't a ton, but it can add up over time and be a difference maker. Every Q will have that bit of damage added on, and once you have Sheen, you can double that, since that scales with 100% of your base AD as well. I don't think this makes Ezreal the next OP pick bot lane, but it definitely makes him feel better to play when you need a safe option. Garen's also getting a base stat adjustment, but instead of 2 AD, it's 3, and on top of that, he's getting an extra 2 armor. This is a huge deal. Garen is doing a bit weaker right now than he has in the past, but he's by no means bad. He's just kind of a mediocre pick. But with a change like this, that could easily change. With his very basic, low counterplay kit, Garen is a very stat-checky champ. So any base changes like this can be huge in determining how his lanes play out. He's also very snowball-centric and can take over games with an early lead. Expect him to definitely jump up at least a tier or two. Janna is never a bad champ to climb with. She has a very low skill floor, meaning you can pretty much always be useful with even minimal know-how and effort, bringing consistent results. But compared to past metas, at the moment, those consistent results aren't super great. You'll probably win more than you lose with her, but rarely will you be the deciding factor in games, even if you know you're the better support player. With her changes this patch, aggressive Janna players will be a lot more impactful, and can actually carry lane phase a decent bit as long as they don't get caught out when they're going up for their poke. The shield change is also pretty nice to see. As we've moved more towards a tank and juggernaut heavy meta this season, fights tend to be less bursty and more lengthy, so shield decay shouldn't be as much of a factor anymore. The Kha'Zix buff is pretty minor when it comes to fighting enemy champs, and will almost never make or break a fight, but it is his most spammable spell, so over the course of a jungle clear, it can actually put you seconds ahead, which can be vital. But even then, Ka isn't suddenly some super god tier pick. He's still situational, and more than anything, it's going to be the player that makes the champ, not an extra 10 damage on his Q. The biggest thing happening for Kog'Maw is the 10% extra slow on his rank 1 E. You max E last, so it's super nice to get all that extra slow power up front. Kog's in a mobile hyper carry. You don't have a jump or a blink to outplay foes, you just want to kill them before they can reach you. Upping his slow so much will go quite a ways in helping them. And when that doesn't work, at least they're also buffing his passive damage this patch, so maybe you'll try to kill back. While not huge, the buffs to Leona's W should help quite a bit in deciding which way fights go bot lane. 10 armor and MR early on is a lot more than it sounds. 
expect her to move up at least a couple of notches on our Engage support tier list. These Lilia buffs are actually pretty insane, and in my opinion, super unneeded. A power farming carry in the jungle shouldn't just be a super strong pick that you can lock anytime and not worry about the matchup. And that's exactly where we're headed. Her clear is going to be super fast and healthy now, and unless you lock her down and burst her, she'll be a crazy drain tank in teamfights. While Nidalee is a popular and successful pick in high elo, especially in Master Plus Korea, for the rest of solo queue, she's a pretty meh, if not terrible option. Getting a bit of armor isn't really going to change that either. She doesn't struggle because she's too low after she clears the jungle. She struggles because she's way too hard for most players to use right. You need really good mechanics and a crazy early game aggressive playstyle so you can force a lead without inting it away. If you're super adamant about making Nid work, this is your reminder that we have challenger coaches that can help you learn to use her just like they did in their climb up the ladder. I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea why we're getting these buffs for Poppy this patch. Sure, overall her win rate is 49%, but when you narrow the search to Plat Plus, which is realistically the best sample for seeing how good a champ is doing, that goes up to over 52%. In Korea specifically, her Plat Plus win rate is nearly 55%. So what does that tell us? Well, maybe Poppy's not weak. Maybe she's just a lot harder to play well than most people like to admit. Maybe, despite being a tank, she actually does take some skill. As with a few other picks on this list, buffing her isn't going to fix her issues in low elo. It's just going to make her more broken for the people that are already able to use her right. Alright now, let's take a look at the champs getting nerfed. I feel like I've said this before, but we're getting yet another tiny round of Aurelion soul nerfs that ultimately don't change a whole lot. Yes, it'll be a bit squishier, but considering you already build him with super tanky items anyways, you won't really notice that missing HP too much. If you can make it to the later parts of the game, he's still going to be a god tier hyper carry. Jarvan will also remain pretty highly ranked. When a champ is considered a top 2 pick in their role, losing out on 0.4 AD per level and 10 damage off of a single ability isn't nearly enough to knock them down from the OP tier. The Kane changes are pretty interesting. I do think Kane in his Shadow Assassin form gets way too much slipperiness from his E. I've always wanted them to nerf it at least a little bit. But I don't think that's the issue right now. If Blue Kane is winning too often, it's probably because he's just a little too oppressive with his whole one-shot your carry in the blink of an eye thing that happens once he has three items. With how much damage Malphite does in lane, and how little he takes, losing 20 damage off the first auto attack after using your W isn't really going to be noticed. And if you're doing Q max with Comet, you basically don't ever get an auto attack range anyways. No matter what build you're doing, either way, later on you're still going to be one-shotting carries. Maybe ask them how that minus 20 feels. Making Rakan squishier is a move in the right direction, but I think they really needed to be a bit more harsh here. Had he lost a bit more armor and some HP, it would have made counterpicking him with other kill lane supports like Nautilus, Thresh, or the newly buffed Leona a lot more appealing. One big issue with Rakan is that you can always just play safe on him, since you know you're going to outscale anyone later on in the game with his godly teamfighting. Making him more vulnerable early game would make that less of a guarantee. And that wraps up our 13.8 patch preview. As always, thanks for joining me for today's video. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. And if you're really serious about getting better at League, don't forget about our website, proguides.com. Until next time, good luck out there on the rifts. Later.